The fallout from the Oscar scandal continues, with senior government ministers calling for Malcolm Turnbull to resign. Mr Turnbull revealed yesterday he met with the man at the centre of the saga, Godwin Gretsch, one week before Mr Gretsch gave his now discredited evidence at a Senate Estimates Committee. For more on this, the opposition's finance spokeswoman, Helen Coonan, joins us now from her office in Sydney. Helen Coonan, good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good the morning, Virginia. How are you? I'm well, thank you. The government is speaking now about trying to establish a privileges committee inquiry into uh, possible contempt by Senator Erica Betts. Will the opposition oppose that? Well, look, it's going to ultimately be a matter for the Senate, but can I say that uh, it is, I think, uh, a fairly ill-founded concept that you would be suggesting, uh, not you, but uh, the, op uh, the government suggesting that uh, Senator uh, Betts uh, was in contempt of the Senate. There's nothing to suggest that uh, Senator Betts, uh, Betts uh, had coached uh, the particular witness, Godwin Gretsch. Uh, there's certainly plenty of evidence to suggest that Godwin Gretsch contacted Senator Betts and Mr Turnbull and uh, in those circumstances I think it would be highly unlikely that any such inquiry, if it were to be founded or agreed to by the Senate, uh, would have an adverse finding. It's, it's certainly in contempt, isn't it, to suggest, as Erica Betts did during his testimony or his questioning, that he'd received some email from a journalist, but it turns out that actually it came from Goldwyn Gretsch. That was deliberately misleading the public as part of that, that Senate uh, committee evidence. Well, look, I think it's, um, it's not a good thing to be uh, trying to guess what might be the subject of any particular inquiry. But, uh, look, uh, we, that is the media, the opposition, uh, the government politicians of all stripe, receive uh, information from, uh, from leakers, from whistleblowers. That's not at all unusual. And uh, the circumstances of this particular case were that firstly the email was false. Uh, that of course was not known to, uh, to Senator Betts or Mr Turnbull. Uh, the second thing about it is that it came from a highly credible source and one that was a trusted source of information, uh, a trusted officer who had been put in charge after all by the government of a two billion dollar project, a two billion dollar program. So this was not someone whose uh, information or whose evidence you would uh, second guess uh, in a way that you think that uh, anything that he put forward uh, would be false or misleading or indeed even exaggerated. There was no reason for anyone on the uh, side of the opposition to second guess that evidence. But you don't believe the opposition has any questions to answer here in the Senate over the shadow play that was constructed between Malcolm Turnbull and Erica Betts and Goldwyn Gretsch. You believe, you believe well, you've, 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 you've conducted yourselves uh, correctly and in the, in the way that senators should as part of those, those Senate committees. Well, what I'm saying is that information comes to oppositions uh, of both colours and has done for many years. Uh, it is important that the sort of information you get gets tested. And uh, in fact, Mr Gretsch was prepared to give evidence in public at a Senate committee uh, that Senator Betts had no reason to believe was anything other than correct. So I think we're grasping at straws here to be suggesting that uh, simply because it turned out to be incorrect evidence that Senator Abetz had any role to play. He didn't know of its falsehood. He has said that very plainly and very clearly. Well, after Malcolm Turnbull's uh, demolition of Goblin Gretsch yesterday, it's unlikely, isn't it, that uh, any other public servant might risk talking to the Liberals again and leaking you such information, isn't it? Well, look, I think it's really hard to tell what, uh, what plays uh, when people feel that they have information to give that should be tested if they're concerned about the probity of the way in which a program uh, is being administered, they may well might. I think the circumstances of this case were unusual in that the evidence was concocted evidence. That is usually not the case. Uh, in fact, I've never known of anything quite like this in all my years uh, in the Senate. I think that this particular case turns on its facts and it ought not to dissuade any one who uh, is aware of any improper conduct or uh, lack of probity in the administration of a government program being prepared to uh, bring forward information 
that's uh, true and can be tested. Uh, just a final question, and it goes to the, the very long time that you've spent in the Senate and your experience. Looking at the material that was released yesterday by Malcolm Turnbull, detailing his dealings with Goldman Gretsch, did alarm bells not ring for you when you looked at that? Did you not think for a moment that if you'd received that information, you'd pause for a moment and think, hang on, what's this bloke really on about? Well, what I would have thought, because I do know Godwin Gretsch, I have had uh, quite uh, significant dealings with him at, uh, when I was Assistant Treasurer, there was not one moment to, uh, to ever question uh, his integrity, uh, his expertise, he was highly thought of. Uh, information coming from somebody like Godwin Gresh, uh, who has been a trusted source of information, would not necessarily make you uh, sit up and take notice. Yes, it was pretty dramatic, but then again, we have seen during the rollout of the stimulus some gross inefficiency and waste on the part of the government. It is entirely appropriate that the opposition sit up and take notice mm. if information comes to us which suggests that uh, taxpayers' money is not being properly used. Senator Coonan, good to talk to you this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, Virginia. Cheers.